Hello, I'm Ed Susevich, the host of Savannah on Film. And at the beginning here of this interview that you're going to hear with Richard Patrick, there were some technical difficulties and the first small portion of the interview, just a few minutes, were not recorded. So I do apologize for that in advance. But please listen and enjoy this very informative episode. And thank you for listening to Savannah on Film. All right, everyone. Last looks. Quiet on set. Roll sound. Sound speed. Roll camera. Camera speed. Scene one. Take one. Mark it. And action. Hi, I'm Ed, the host of Savannah on Film, and we explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry in related fields. You can find us here on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings. Community Radio with Global Soul. Welcome to Savannah on Film. I am your host, Ed Susevich, and our purpose is to explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry and related fields. We are here on WRUU 107.5 FM LP, Savannah Soundings, Community Radio with Global Soul. We're welcoming to the show today, Richard Patrick. And our guest today, Richard, is one of the kindest, most talented, most hilarious people I've ever met. A good film industry friend, great boomer, filmmaker, voice actor, and a superb human being. Richard is a very passionate filmmaker who enjoys telling stories and using them to both connect with and inform people. He is a production assistant and more, who has the skills as well as the desire to make sure every production he works on is great. Acting, writing, directing, editing, and location management are also areas where Richard excels. He is always looking to network and collaborate with fellow filmmakers. Richard has a talent as an impressionist and voiceover actor, plus he hosts a movie review show on his Richard Patrick channel entitled Rich Reviews, available on YouTube, and he can do many spot-on impressions of famous people. So, Rich, let's look at your accomplishments in film that you have been involved with, and please, as we discuss them, feel free to jump in and add your thoughts where you like. Okay? So, let's begin. Yeah, it was, uh, it was just a lot of fun. And actually, I was sound mixer on that. And I had to be in control of watching levels and dialogue and miking talent. I learned a lot on that show. Cool. We have Unhinged from 2018. Unhinged. Okay, and now that... As an actor. Yeah, now that's... I acted in that one. Um, and I think that was a character that was made solely for me. I recently just graduated from the GFA program at Savannah Tech... And that was one of the short films that we did for the 48-hour film project online. Instructor John Grace, he was in charge of that. He's a great guy. Really knows his stuff. He's been in the industry for 30-plus years. 
learned a lot from that guy. And in that film, I played a um, a mental patient, and I've, I think I've developed a lot of skills that have prepared me for that role. Um, it was funny. It was just a very zany, wacky time. Okay. So we have Peter Pitts. Okay, I can't read my own handwriting. Pitts. Pitts. Yeah, Pitts. Peter. What? <laughs> Peter. That's a that's a totally different what? film that you acted in. It's okay? good bread. It's good. This bread. is another short. Yeah, Pitts. This was. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen this one, and it's actually kind of hilarious. It, you know what? It, it was a. Uh, it was another uh, scad project. I had a lot of fun with this one, though. Pretty much, I'm a a guy who is trying to find a job, mm-hmm. and I go into all these interviews, and I just can't stop sweating, Ed. My pits just profusely sweat in <laughs> hilarious, over-the-top ways, and I won't spoil it, but, you know, I eventually find my calling at the end of the movie, but we won't say what it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, 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 was, it's a, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun working on that, on that film. 2017, you played Charles the Butler in the Dollar Bill Theory, another short. Yes, that is, that is a short that is currently still in uh, post-production. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I was a butler. Um, really, not much to it. Tried to channel as much Alfred as I could. Oh, from <laughs> Batman. Well, you know, I got to. I mean, I'm wearing my Batman shirt today, Ed. Yeah, we're we're both representing DC. I've got my Flash shirt on. We didn't plan that. Uh, you know, so. uh, yeah, you know, we did. We coordinated. Like I called you last night. <laughs> He's like, "What are you wearing, man? You wearing? We're on radio. What are you wearing?" <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, But yeah, that film's in post-production. I'm not sure when it'll be out, but I can't wait to see it. I had a lot of fun uh, working on that film with the cast and crew as well. Cool. He Who Laughs Again, short. You were you played Slappy. That's this one. This one's really close to my heart. This one's really close to my heart, Ed. Okay. He Who Laughs Again is actually a sequel. When I was at Georgia Southern, mm-hmm. we had... A weekly film. It was a week long film challenge. It's like a little film festival, and we had a week to shoot a short and turn it in, and then we just had a festival at the end of the week to determine, you know, the best film for different categories. And there were different teams at the school that did it, and the short story that we we had parameters that were given to us. It had to involve clowns, certain props, and certain character names. Uh, a lot of film festivals do this, you know, particularly the 48-hour film project. But with this one, we we created, the, me and my friend uh, Madison Reynolds, who's a very talented filmmaker, mm-hmm. very great cinematographer, phenomenal editor. He's also an actor. Uh, he played Tippy Toes McDoes a lot, who is my partner in crime, and I'm Slappy McFunnel Cake, and we're a couple <laughs> of crazy clowns that stalk and prey upon people. So he who laughs, it's a short. It was eight minutes long. Uh, it's funny. We made this short. And then like shortly after that is when all those crazy clown sightings were going oh, yeah. on. You remember that? I do remember that. Yes. So in college, we were like, okay, well, let's take something that we've done and let's make a sequel. Like, let's try and take this, the characters that we've created and expand upon it and just try it. And so our first film, He Who Laughs, was eight minutes. He Who Laughs Again ended up being 43, oh 43 minutes. He Who Laughs Again directed, or assisted directed with that. Uh, Madison Reynolds helped. Um, I was a writer mm-hmm. and played the clown Slappy, Mc, uh, Slappy McFunnel Cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Slappy it, McFunnel Cake? Yeah, and it's kind of a... Did you come up with that name? Oh, yeah. Okay. Me and uh, Madison Reynolds, we came up with the clown names for... Uh, our characters. And so the story is kind of a noir thriller comedy. I know that's a lot in one film, but we, you know, college, we're trying to just do whatever we want. And we had a lot of fun. It's about the clowns. They, you know, running amok. And there's a detective named Don Hamblin, and he's trying to catch these guys. And, right. And then um, it, it was a lot of fun. It was, it's, it, I hold it near and dear to my heart. It's not for everyone, but I really enjoy it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now we get to in your acting. Okay, still in the acting category. Gemini Man. No, that I didn't act in that. Ed, you're giving me more credit than I deserve. 
I, I didn't act in that film. What am I doing here? I don't know. We had some typos, but I mean, I hope I acted in those films. Didn't I? I'm going to okay, get some. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm some, sorry. Uh, you produced residuals. and directed that. And yeah, wrote yeah. It. No. <laughs> I'm really good friends with sorry, uh, Mr. I, Smith. So. <laughs> my brain is like gone. It's a slap happy. You no, were in it's slappy. <laughs> it's slappy. Did we mention Southern Charm? We that's where I meant to go. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, that <laughs> that's a, that's another short film that I did in the GFA program under John Grace. People like work with Justin Bearfield. He's a great guy. Jack Cromings, all kinds of guys from the GFA program. Shout out to those guys. Hunter Mayo, wherever you're at. This one's for you. Lock it up. There's a lot of terms on set. Lock it up. Pictures up. Right. We, we love Hunter. He's got a distinct Southern accent. So if he's out there listening, I love you, Hunter. But yeah, Southern Charm was a short film we did. I mean, it was, another, I think it was for another 48-hour online project. And you were the dead butler in that one, right? Yes. They're trying to sell a house, and the couple that's trying to buy the house, mm-hmm. um, there's ghosts in the house, and the realtor is trying to not get them to see the ghost. The realtor can see right. the ghost. I, I've and, seen uh, this one. It's, it's, a, it's a funny little it, short I film. Liked it. I like it. Nice. It's got some charm to it, you know? Ha, ha. Don't, reach across, southern... don't reach across and slap me. <laughs> Virtual slap. <laughs> okay. So going from Southern Charm in 2017 to The Big Score, another short that you did. Yes, The uh, the Big Score. That was a, I think that was my first short film that I did outside of college in terms of like that I didn't write or have anything to do with behind the camera. Um, it was... I think my first short film outside of college where I was just straight up acting, and that was all I was in charge of. Acting. That was all I was in charge of. Ben Powell, uh, he's one of my friends from Georgia Southern. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's a great guy. Um, He helmed that film and actually starred in it, too. That was a lot of fun. That one was where I play sort of a bandit. I'm a robber. We're trying to... We think that this elderly lady has a fortune, and we want to sneak in and steal from her. Slapstick ensues. Um, it's a, it was a really fun short film. I, I really enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun on the set. Ben's a great guy. So yeah, I'd like to work with him again if he's got another script out there. Okay, and so far that, am I correct? So correct oh, yeah, me if I'm wrong? Correct. I mean, your, your batting average is pretty good right I now. I know, yeah, yeah. I should play for <laughs> whatever team's not doing well right now. I'm going to pretend that I like sports. Yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, there. sports. Director. Yeah, you um, have three creds on that. Okay. And we'll start at 2017. We talked a little bit about He Who Laughs Again. You were director on that also. Right. Anything else to add about that? Just to anyone out there who's trying to be a, a triple threat, uh, don't, <laughs> don't do it right away. Because it's when you write a film and then you're acting in that film and then you're trying to direct said film... Um, right. It just there's a lot that you have to run through your brain. You mm-hmm. know, you're sitting there before the shots. You know, you're you're trying to make sure the shots set up right. You're working with your DP. Uh, you're trying to also work with your fellow cast. When you're also trying to help produce, you're trying to make sure locations, everything's good to go. Right. And then once all that's set, you got to get in front of the camera and turn your brain into a clown. Uh, which I may, I'll do a little voice for you right now, a little teaser. I know sure, we're going to do go. some voices later, but yeah. <laughs> if anyone wants to hear this, that, or we're going to hear some voices. Oh, yeah, you know, there's, they're all in my head. They come out sporadically. Okay. Uh, but, you know, the, you got to, you're, you're getting the shot set up, working, make sure everything's good to go. All right. You're call, You're making the calls, you know, roll sound, and then sound action. Sound speed. Oh, sound sorry. speed, you know, and then it's action. And then you got, you know, wow, slap me, McFlat, okay, wow. And then you turn it off. It's like, all right, let's do it again. Let's reset. Let's, you know, make sure everything's good. And it's it's a lot for your brain to process trying to be in, you know, writing, directing, acting, and all that stuff. So it's fun, but filmmaking is a collaborative process. And it's good when you can work with people that you're close to and are friends with that you can trust. I agree. When you're in front of the camera to make sure you're, you know, looking good and everything's all right. And luckily, the crew that we've worked, that I've worked with on that film, they were great. They knew their stuff. And I mean, I really didn't have to worry about too much. But just, you know, going in, if you're going to try and be a triple threat, just remember that, that there's a lot that you got to take into consideration. Yeah, that's true. It's it, it's hard to do multiple tasks in several different departments. 
and especially when you're an actor, it is one of those because you've got to be in the right headspace. You've got to wear these different caps, and people do it, but it none of them will say that it's an easy thing to do. So, right, and um, injustice for all in 2017, another short. Yes, is so- this related to any DC? thing <laughs> no it's not okay. for those this gamers is, this out is, there uh, far from anything dc related injustice for all um we shot this simultaneously with he who laughs again okay so this is my this is my senior senior year at georgia southern my last semester and i'm shooting this clown noir thriller comedy clowns and then Right beside that, along with that, I'm filming Injustice for All, which we uh, was a police drama. Okay. Right? And, and um, I mean, we, we wanted to tackle some issues. If if I had to go back, I'd probably say, like, hey, guys, let's wait till we get a bigger budget. But for what we pulled off, college students, I mean, I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of it. What advice uh, – Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, it's all right. It's, uh, what advice would you give on, on that, you know, once you finish there? Um, what advice would you give to fellow college students, or you, you were a college student then? But Oh, so long ago. So long <laughs> ago. Uh, but we can get to that, but I'm sorry. Finish your statement. Oh, no, well, it, I can – I mean, that leads into what I was about to say. I mean, it's it was a police drama. Um, we tried to cover both sides – that there's a story on both sides, you know, that there that the cops had a story – and uh, the citizens that were involved with the story, they had a story, in fact, and we followed the main character. And we just were trying to show that there was, you know, good and bad on both sides of the law. And when you're trying to tackle that with a very low budget, um, it's, you know, you want to be as screen accurate as possible. Like, I'll just tell you uh, some things mm-hmm. uh, on set. Like, we, uh, we thought we had a car to use for the cop car right. and it fell through. So we had to end up using my truck, and the the justification for it was, you know, small towns, so we're just going to use a truck. In some small towns, law enforcement do use trucks and stuff like that. Right. But, you know, that was one of the things, if we had had a, a bigger budget and more time, we could have maybe used an actual car and stuff like that. But little things aside, the actors were great. I feel like our script was really good. We actually had plans to flesh the film out even more um it was like we got the cut down i think to it was originally 40 minutes or so i think we might have got it down to 30 or 20 minutes for the final you know but we had so much story we we could have went even further than that and actually probably went to feature length but um with doing two films two huge films like that in your senior year at um your last semester at college um it was a lot of a lot of work and um but i'm really proud of the result i know you look back at some of the films you make and you that's that's part of being a filmmaker you evolve as a filmmaker you learn from mistakes definitely you learn yeah. different techniques you meet new people and i mean yeah i look back at some of the stuff i'm like wow why was i acting like that in that film you know or what was what was i thinking there but at the same time like you know what i'm proud of what i've done it's it's my it's my stuff right it's it's a moment in time and you a lot of filmmakers have to resist that temptation to go back and keep changing things. You know, um, I think of George Lucas and <laughs> I wish he would have left some things alone, but I'm glad I, I hold him in such high esteem. But, you know, when you go back and you change it and you look at things in a different perspective, sometimes it's good to have it in that time, like a time capsule that it is. Right. And, and you can definitely, like you said, see that evolution of your, your acting abilities or your directing or producer or whatever, you know, your area was in that particular feature. So, right. Cause I remember looking, I mean, I remember, you know, d- directing those films and, you know, those are the first real films that I had, that I was in charge of. I mean, my class, you know, my, we broke up into groups and sat down and, we decided who was going to do what. And when they picked me as the director, I was like, I, I felt honored, you know, that you, that my peers would pick me to do that. And I know there's no way I could have done it without them. You know, mm-hmm. Madison Reynolds, Tahir Dottier, Brandon Warnock, uh, JC Carroll. I mean, these are people that I worked with that helped me, helped me get through the, the films and stuff like that. Cool. You have another credit for, for a moment. For a moment. A short. Yep. That, um, that is one that I directed and wrote. Uh, we, 
a uh, little backstory. We had, uh, my friends and I, uh, we actually helped get the first film club for Georgia Southern going. It was. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's I mean, it, we you go to Georgia Southern, it's really big, and I, I was big in the film, and there's a film department. But I was like, is there a place we can go like, after class? And I had heard that we were trying to get a film club starting, so I was actually one of the first members of the film club. Wow, that's mm-hmm. something to be very proud of. Yeah, and um, we through that uh, through the film club, one of my friends, Erica Pierno, she uh, she got. Campus Movie Fest to come to our campus. Campus Movie Fest is an organization. They come in, they bring equipment, they're mm-hmm. there for a week. You break up into teams, you shoot your films, turn them in, and at the end of the week, they hold a festival. They'll pick the top 16 out of all the films that were created, right. and they'll screen them, and they'll pick four jury award winners that go to uh, national. And if you do good there, you go to the Cannes Film Festival in France. And for a moment was a short film. We did a couple. We did a couple of short films that week. For a moment was the one that I personally wrote and directed. There's another one called For Him that I worked on as well. Okay. And both films actually went to France. I got to graduate college and then go to the 69th Cannes Film Festival. So I've got a catalog at home with all the films that screened over there. You go to the short film corner and you scroll you go all the way down and boom, you can see the films. What was that like? Because I saw early on uh, when we first met and all, I was checking out some of your stats and different things in, in the film industry. And, and I saw that you had went to Cannes. And what was that experience like? Um, Pretty much whatever drive I had, it pretty much infused it even more because – you graduate college and you get on a plane, you go to France, you're there at the red carpet, you see all these celebrities, you you try to get these tickets to get into these screenings. Um, right. I actually got to to be one of the first people in the world to see the BFG, which was uh, Spielberg's, one of his yeah. newer films about the big friendly giant. And that was that was an experience uh, seeing him in person and hearing like John Williams' score swell up over the crowd oh, wow. as he's walking down the red carpet. I mean, it just it, it it it's hard to describe the feeling. I mean, I won't lie, I teared up because I mean, he's one of the people that I've looked up to. He's one of the reasons why I got into film. And I know that's cliche to say, well, Spielberg. But I mean, you can't help it. I mean, credit where credit is due. Spielberg is fantastic at what he does, and he just. He creates films that make you feel something. He started out like everyone else is, mm-hmm. you know, making his own little short films and evolved into probably one of the most influential people of our, at least our lifetimes. Right. You know, it, and maybe one of one of the he's definitely in the top 10, I think, of all filmmakers of all time. Right. And, and so when you're there and you see someone like him there and countless other people. Right. And you're there with your friends people that you hold dear and that you've created something with. Like, I mean, I, I wrote for a moment, which was a, it's a, it's a, it's a romance film. It's a drama. I mean, uh, about a couple. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just a quick for a moment. It's a little, they're on a date and they have a little fight, make up. It's just a little slice of life for a moment. And so the fact that, you know, something that I wrote, which isn't the greatest, you know, script ever written, but something that I created something that I wrote from my heart and something that my friends helped bring to life uh, with their skills and their talent to see it on a screen in a building where all these other famous people are screening their films. I mean, it just, it makes you feel good. It just makes you feel good. And it just gives you a a drive. It's kind of like sneaking in the back door right there and you know and you know everybody's in there it's like it's like being the oscars and you get to stand in the back of the room you know and you're like wow i, I belong here if you, you know <laughs> right. uh, you know and there's not many local filmmakers that can say and especially at your age um 105 that you are no yeah. <laughs> that uh that can say that they've been the cans or cons. I'm cons. probably saying it right. I'm saying it southern like cans. Cans, it's, like yeah. It's the Cans Film Festival. Yes. So that's the difference. It's cans, not cons. <laughs> Y'all went to cans. Or it's con. <laughs> con. Yeah, oh, gosh, don't. Oh, cool. Okay. Kirk. Kirk. 
sound department. That's my favorite department. Oh, yeah. Um, 2017. Can I say it? Relics Madre... The Madre Vina. Vina. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's... Like I said you, earlier, you that sound, was... You were a sound mixer on this I was a mixer one. on that, and that was the first time I ever, like... I mean, I had done a few projects in class, but this is the first... I was like, oh, a feature, and I'm sound mixer? Oh, my gosh. And um, It's a daunting task. Oh, yeah. I mean, because, I mean, I didn't want to, you know... I feel like I did pretty good. Mm-hmm. Listen to the tracks. The prep professor said it was good, so... And I listened to it. I mean, it, there's so many problems. People really don't... I mean, people just don't appreciate sound until they're watching the final product was, you know, but while you're on set, people don't think that much about sound. And it's like, listen, that's the, I was on listening a, to a film is just as important as seeing the film. I said this before, but I, probably, but I was on a film with a producer. It, it was a, it was just a student film. And actually that student film's gone on to do pretty well, but um, they asked me to be sound mixer on it. So I kind of did as a favor and I was on there and the producer says to me, you know, I had the idea for sound and, you know, I didn't overstep my boundaries or anything, but I said to the producer, I said, who was also, I think, a co-writer, co-director, and co-everything on the film, and I said, you know, maybe we can try this little way to get better sound out of this particular scene, if you don't mind, you know. And I was very respectful of, of him. And he says, well, my audience doesn't care about sound. And I'm like, I like, you know, it's like my heart dropped. I'm like, wait, well, you're... He, he said, I don't really care about sound. And I know he did care about the sound, but he didn't, it wasn't like his major concern. And I said to him, well, your audience cares about it. And I said, imagine Star Wars with no sound. <laughs> yeah, unless you're going for a silent picture. And, um, you know, he agreed with me and, you know, there was no, you know, beef or anything there, but, but, but sound is, it gets underappreciated. It's at least 60%, if not more, I think of, of your film. Everybody looks at the visual and, you know, if the visual's messed up, you, of course you're going to notice that. But I was at a, the 48 hour film festival one year and there was a film playing and the picture was fine, but the sound hurt my ears. Literally. I'm, I'm I wanted out of it. I wanted to, it took me totally out of the film and I, I literally wanted to get up and leave the room. And I'm like, oh dear, you know, I, I almost offered my services. You need a sound mixer, <laughs> and and all that. But uh, sound is extremely important. So yeah, it was just a lot of there was a lot of things dealing with that film, like lav lav mics. You know, mm-hmm. we would be in caves, and the reception would be terrible, and it was just it was crazy. But I learned a lot, and I learned, okay. and that's where I learned a lot of respect for sound mixers. And mm-hmm. recorders and everything because uh, it, there's there's so much you got to deal with and <laughs> room tone. It's like I need yeah. everyone to just be quiet for just and that, that kind thirty of seconds to a minute, please. Twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen, we worked on some uh, a wonderful gentleman who's been on the show here before, David Harlan Russo. Mm-hmm. He uh, wrote and p- produced. Now in twenty eighteen for the forty eight, it was actually Aaron Paderewski who. Mm-hmm was the director on that and um, uh, on cello that we did. And we also worked in 2017 on Savior's Mule. And you you were my boom op on that. I was a sound mixer on that. I think that. That, was our, that was our first. Yeah, Savior's Mule was the first. And that was a kind of grueling shoot towards the end. <laughs> that, that last scene, that last day, we talked about it on the show oh, before. Yeah. But it was, it was a lot of fun. It was just, um, it was really cool. And um, what did you... What have you learned from being like a boom op? I mean, you already did the sound mixer part and you got, mm-hmm. you know, a feeling for that. You know, you kind of went in feet first. <laughs> right. Well, I, I like, um, I kind of like being the boom op a lot because, I mean, you're, it's like you're physically getting in there. You're a ninja, basically. You're, you're getting in there with the actors and you're, and you got to coordinate with the camera, make sure that the boom's not in the shot or anything like that. Right. And it's, it feel, I mean, you're, you're There's fishing, so many you're fishing for sound is what I call it. Cause you're just mm-hmm. holding this rod out there and just hoping to get it. And like, that's what I liked working with you. Cause you, all you had to worry about was, you know, listening to it and making sure the levels were good. I could communicate with you. Make well, sure there, was, there was more going on than that. Yeah, well, but, I know there's a lot more going yeah, on that, yeah. but I'm saying like, yeah. I didn't have well, to worry. Yeah. I didn't have to worry about all the right. stuff that you had to worry about. And it was kind of like I was the Padawan. You were the Jedi Master. Well, like, Go there, Padawan. And so I would like, you know, you could, swing You could easily there. be a Jedi Master. Trust me, you're, you're that talented. Um, and uh, we, Patrick, who was just on Adam's show before us, Patrick Roper. He's great. He, he, was, he was in those movies. And um, 
exceptional actors, a, a whole a whole cast. I, I love that that group of people that I've. I'd love with to get to act with Patrick. I know I don't know if he's listening or not, but Patrick, I'd, I'd like trust to me, Patrick listens. I'd like to hopefully be in a film with Patrick and act with him, or uh, get just you know I'll go to, off uh, go off on him, you know, like and just rant back and forth. Patrick is one of our most gifted actors here in Savannah. He he really is top notch A level, and. Um, I'll have to talk to him. Maybe I can <laughs> see what we can do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we've got we've got to speed things up a little bit. It's time for us to roll into a commercial break here. So thank you so far for joining us, world, and everyone in Savannah here on WRUU LP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM. And we will be at, back after these commercials. So hang on. R-U-U-L-P, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. Tune in Saturdays at 3 p.m. to Muses, Memoirs, and More, your show about authors, artists, and entertainers with your host, Adam Messer. You're listening to WRUU-LP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. The Savannah Philharmonic's 10th anniversary season will begin with Beethoven's Fifth Symphony on September 22nd and will end with Mahler's Resurrection Symphony on May 4th. In between, the orchestra will present the city's largest outdoor music event, the Picnic in the Park, on October 7th. For more information, visit savannahphilharmonic.org. WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And we're back with our guest, Richard Patrick, here on Savannah on Film. And time's uh, creeping up on us very quickly here. Um, an hour, like I always say, it like just everyone flies. says, it just totally flies by. Um, so I'm going to try to speed up the pace here because I want to get to some other questions and I'm just going to fire off some things and you can just give me a one or two liner on it. Um, you may fire when ready. Okay. As a writer, we mentioned that he who laughs again, 2017, you're a writer on that among other things and Southern charm. We mentioned that, that short you are a writer on for editor 2018 unhinged. Can, um, can you talk about that? Yeah, I can talk about it. Um, I was actually a co-editor. My good buddy, Justin Bearfield, Mr. Justin Haspants, um, helped me out. Uh, we we were both editing that film. We stayed way late up into the night, getting very <laughs> delusional. Um, when you're when it's super late, you're trying to re- you're trying to edit something for a 48 hour film project. It just you're under the gun. It's not like a personal project where you can just, oh, I'm going to edit this and I'll pick it up in a little bit. And it's like, no, this is due in a few hours. We have got to work on getting this thing put together. So luckily he was there to help me. But um, yeah, I've, um, I learned basic editing skills um, at Southern and I, I'm not the best editor, but I know the basics around Premiere and stuff like that. Um, I put my own stuff together for my channel I don't really do a lot of complex editing, but um, it was fun. I I love working with somebody when I edit because it just kind of you get feedback. Like, do you think this looks good or no? Do you think that looks good? It's kind of like uh, my buddy Madison Reynolds in college. We'd he would um he would be the main editor on a lot of our projects, and we would sit there together and be like, "Does this look good? Does this look good?" Right. And just like you you mm-hmm. again the collaborative process. So it's good to work to edit with somebody. But I do edit some things by myself and just. Throw them out there and see if it works or not. Okay. Um, also, Southern Charm, you're an editor on. I want to get to these two big ones, and then we need to jump into questions yeah. here. Emperor, uh, location. This, these are location. Production location. assistance. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, location, production assistance. We have Emperor and Gemini Man. Like, what can you talk about I can't talk on about, those? Uh, I'll just tell you that it's good to be on a big film like that. I mean, these are huge films. I mean, it's no, right. it's no spoiler or anything. You know, Will Smith was in Gemini Man. They came right. to Savannah. They were here for months. It, it's just 
crazy, you know, you're working on short, smaller scale films and you know all the, all the work that goes into just creating these short 10 minute films. And then you get onto a big, you know, right. couple hundred million dollar movies and it's just like, Oh, it's wow. totally different world. Totally different world. When yeah. You and, it, and it's, uh, I learned, I'll just say this. I learned a lot that I didn't know and, um, just apply a lot of, a lot of, uh, being in locations, I didn't really implement a lot of my skills in terms of like filmmaking, in terms of editing or anything like that. A lot of the skills I implemented in being a production assistant was just hard work and good work ethic. Get that uh, from my parents. They just they taught me, you know, work hard. Don't don't half butt it <laughs> so, yeah yeah so. I, can, I can totally get that and one one other film backtrace in 2018 you were a production intern on that yes i was an intern on that in the gfa program we had it where you could get on, right. a, on, a, on an internship and that was the film that i interned on i got to work with the ad department on that one and that was completely different than locations but there are some similarities you're as a production assistant you're just doing a lot of running you know go get this go get that but it was, I learned a lot on that film as well. Working, you know, you get to see Stallone. He's right there in front of you. Rocky. Oh, Sly. I know. <laughs> Rambo. Gosh. Um, it was just really good. It's, that was the first big film that I got on. And um, just working, it was like, wow, I'm actually here. You spend time working on these, you know, smaller films and trying to act in things. And then you get on this big big budget film and you're like wow right wow 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 <laughs> all right well well here's the fun part of our show and we'll i don't know that we'll ever be able to do this again <laughs> because Gosh. i don't know anybody who can who can who can fire off impressions well, but you, you're doing really well there. and so <laughs> i'm just gonna fire off some names and if you want to just go into character and give me a, a one line here and um this is fun shaggy and scooby-doo well, like it, it's been really great being here. <laughs> but, you know, you could have laid out a snack tree or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My favorite uh, impression that you do, the Joker. Ooh, well, Ed, you know, it's been really fun talking to you, but I have to get back to planning how I can destroy the Batman. He really makes my skin crawl. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. From Lord of the Rings, Smog the Dragon. Oh, Smog. Okay. Sm Am I saying it wrong? Smog, Smog the Dragon. Smog the Dragon. Oh, that's the wonderful uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, I'm going to try and do that here. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Well, thief, where are you? Come now. Don't be shy. Step into the light. Okay. <laughs> that was a little crazy. And then imagine smoke and fire coming out of my nostrils. Oh, dear. And then there's your dragon. Yeah, don't burn the equipment here. It's <laughs> <laughs> Got a live dragon in the studio. Okay, um, in that Lord of the Rings mode, how about our good friend Gollum? Well, Ed, this show is very precious to me, but I must find my precious, real precious. He stole it from us. <laughs> Gollum, Gollum. It's something stuck in your throat there, sounds like, Gollum. You have some water. <laughs> oh, my gosh. W what would um, Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob SquarePants say about that? Well, he'd probably be telling you to get back to work, Mr. Ed. Ah, c -c 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 -c. <laughs> That's right, Krabs. It's your old pal Plankton. I'm going to steal your Krabby Patty formula and sell it to Ed. <laughs> What about Gilbert Godfrey? What would he have to say? <laughs> He'd probably blow out your mics, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm working on the levels. Well, here. I don't know, Ed. He'd probably complain that he can't scream as loud as he really wants because he doesn't want to blow out people's car speakers. I think he just did. <laughs> okay, um, Fran Drescher from The Nanny. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> you know, he's not as charming as you, Mr. Ed. 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, was her name Nanny? I don't even know what her name was. I can't remember. It was Fran. It was a Fran? Yeah. Okay. From Modern Family, Sophia Vergara. I hope <laughs> I'm saying that right. <laughs> you know, Ed, you're so wonderful. You're crazy, you know. I'm going to come over there. I'm going to steal this show from you. Uh-oh, <laughs> please don't. This will be my show from now on, okay? And it'll be fabulous. It'll be great. <laughs> uh, what about the head elf from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Now, you just come on here into elf practice and start wiggling those ears, Ed. What are they teaching you here? Come on, we got to get ready for Christmas. Well, I wonder what the Dark Knight, uh, Christian Bale, might say. Well, he'd probably tell you. <laughs> it's is a terrible impression, but I don't care. I'm going all I'm in. not wearing hockey pants. You gotta have the throat. Bane. <laughs> I'm not wearing hockey pants. Can you do Bane? Well, I think I can do him just a little bit better than the Batman. <laughs> Ed, I will break you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Sylvester the cat. Fluff and fluck attacks, Ed. What's wrong with you? Where's the rest of us? Where's the little bird? I want to grab him. Elmer Fudd. Well, I don't know. Where's the squooey wabbit? Where's the wabbit, Ed? <laughs> I don't know. Who else? I don't know, you got about, like, one more quarter to play in this jukebox. Okay, yeah, the jukebox is out, okay. <laughs> Thank y'all for letting us get a little crazy there, so um, just a little bit of fun. I mean, there's a lot of voices in my head. If I don't let them out periodically, it just gets uh, it gets ugly. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so, in all those characters, are what, what actors inspire you, Richard? Um, well, rest his soul, Robin Williams played a big a big part of oh my, my childhood. Gosh, yeah. I mean, I think I did for a lot of people, you know, he's the genie, uh, Jumanji, um, Jim Carrey's another one. I know Jim's got some stuff mm -hmm. going on right now, but I love Jim, all his work that he's done here recently. Chris Pratt is a big influence on me in terms of like the career I would like to have as an actor. You resemble Chris Pratt a little bit. I'm the off-brand Chris you're Pratt. The, you're, you're the, okay, you're the generic version. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you can't get Chris Pratt and if you can't get 20 other guys that are like Chris Pratt, I think you can get me. Oh, dear. <laughs> so what movies inspire you the most? Um, well, the, the first film that really inspired me was uh, Jurassic Park, of course, Steven Spielberg. Anybody that knows me, that is the film that, that is my go-to film. I've seen it, I don't know how many times. Um, it was just the first movie that made me go, how'd they do that? Like, I can remember being a little kid mm -hmm. and watching it going, I, I mean, how wh how did that, it's a dinosaur, it's real. How, how did they, how, how, did they, they, do, how did they do it? And so ever since then, it, that that's the film that hooked me. I mean, there's countless other films that are, like, better in terms of screenplay and stuff like that. Like, I would say that, Spielberg's best film, emotionally anyway, is E.T. I mean, I think that's his best one, personally, for me. Close Encounters close is en I was pretty... I yeah. Close Encounters, in terms of, like, how it's shot and yeah. the pacing, like, it, it's an aggressive film. But like, most of his films aren't about the effects. Really, they're about the family dynamic. I saw this mm -hmm. wonderful documentary or whatever on Spielberg, and it's just, he's just amazing. He's so amazing. And, um, yeah... It's not just the special effects, and sometimes I, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. I mean, he did some spectacular things like Schindler's List and, you right. know, such important films. Jaws, and I mean, yeah. That, Jaws was so groundbreaking, and for what, what little, like, animatronics and, and stuff And we're hitting the greatest doing, hits here. I mean, we're yeah. not, I mean, we're... we're There's so <laughs> much in between, and... But just um, in terms of me, like, emotionally, what he, like, I feel like E.T. is what, especially if you know his, like, backstory yeah. and stuff, I feel like... E.T. is the one that emotionally, I feel like Spielberg put emotionally right. himself in that film. And that's why I feel like, to me, that's his. his well, best. I think Close Encounters was kind of about his parents when yeah. they were having some issues and, and you know, or, or kids dealing with divorce and stuff like that or possible mm -hmm. divorce and family issues. So I like how he puts that, he brings that humanism into these. Fantasy out there. Exactly. Thank you. Adventures. Yeah. yeah. Where do you see your, yourself, your career, in five years? Um, in the studio with you, Ed. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, plan. I'm being serious. Back in the studio, hopefully, with more stories to tell. Um, I'd, I, I'm hopefully my acting career will pick up. I mean, I've I had an audition today. I want you to say that, but I want you to say it more optimistically. It's going to get better, Ed. It's always going to get better. No, I, I mean, yeah, I'll be, that's the, that's, you know, I, I try to be humble. I try to be, you know, but they also tell you, you know, go in there like you're going to get it. Like go in there and get the, like audition for that part like you're going to get the part. And I mean, it's the, the key is just to just stay, stay busy. Like I go through times where I'm creatively, I feel like I'm in a slump, but we all do. We, you all, and you, but the thing is, you just got to keep going. Like, like you know, I'm starting rich reviews again. I try to write when I can. Um, I audition for stuff when I can. And remind our audience where rich reviews can be found. I know you just did a new intro for it. Right. They uh, can find it on on my YouTube channel. Uh, just type in Richard Patrick, you'll see my face. But if you follow me on Instagram at the Rich Patrick or on Twitter at Rich Patrick sixty. Yeah, um, I'll post updates and stuff like that, and you can see the videos. You can find me on Facebook, but yeah, you'll you'll see it there. You'll see updates and everything. But I mean, the thing is just to stay busy, surround yourself with friends and family that support you, and that that's the biggest thing. Um, I am by no means successful. Yeah, I mean, I've met, I've had some accomplishments, and I'm continuing and planning on you know accomplishing more i'm i'm very goal driven and i know i want more but what i have so far i owe it to support from good friends and family uh, that that's it's the most important thing because you know you're doing this industry you're trying to get in this industry it's not as easy as you know going to a, a regular nine to five job or something like that it takes some uh, some people look at it like you, you want to do film. Well, the thing about success is a lot of people measure it in, in awards and in mm -hmm. money, but there's a lot of personal success and satisfaction from knowing that you've done the best you can, that you've done a good job, and that you're taking yourself to that next level. And so I wouldn't say that you're not a success. You know, you, you we all have successes, and, and I'm not lowering the bar. I'm yeah. just saying that that don't count yourself out for anybody out there that's listening that's trying to become an actor, a director, a producer, a screenwriter. Just dig away at it. Get your training in. Put in the hard work. And that hard work one day will pay off. And right. will pay off in, in, in ways you can't even imagine at this point. Like, and that's, that's what yeah. I mean by, like, I, I believe I have success. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm successful at what I've done. But I also know that there's more out there that I can get. Right. That I'm gonna get. And it's just, and there's moments we're all human. We feel a little down. You feel like you can't do it. You feel like, oh, this is just, you know, ridiculous. But I mean, it's you just have to keep going. It's like anything. You got to just keep pushing and keep working for right. it. And eventually, it's like you said, it will pay off. Is there any advice you think, or um, well, you just gave the advice to the listeners there. What do you think Savannah's lacking in in the film industry? What do you think we could take us to that next level, in your opinion? I know there's been debate, but I mean, I really wish we could have an actual studio here. It would get. I mean, I feel like the film industry is is pretty good here. I mean, you know, we've we've I've been on three big major studio films this year as a production assistant, and I've worked on short films. There's some work here. Um, I wish more work would come here. Um, but I feel like since I've been here, I feel like, you know, there's been work in the area. I feel like it'd be cool if we had a studio. That way it would give people, you know, they're coming from out of town. I've heard people say that, oh, Savannah's a beautiful place to film. It looks great. But there's no big, you know, soundstage, soundstage That's what or anything need, like yeah. that. And I really... And it's know, something I, we talked about our, with uh, Chad Darnell last week on our previous show. Yeah. And um, that is important. And I know there, there are people behind the scenes trying to make that happen, but... That would be the next logical step in Savannah. So we can get, like I said, the Black Panther sequel down here instead of and Atlanta. Spider-Man. Not to take it against the away from Atlanta, you know, but we yeah. can get the next big budget movies. We can have simultaneous, more simultaneous movies mm -hmm. on a massive budget scale that right. can employ even more people and rise the tide. And um, But I believe there's talent. I believe the talent's here. There's a lot of hardworking people, both in front of and behind the camera here. Uh, the locations here. I just feel like you know, if we had a studio, a little right. soundstage, that'd help us out. But I know there's plenty of talented uh, people here in the industry, and I, I could sit here and name a lot of them. But I just, you know, who you are, and right. I, when I work with you, it's it's always great. 
Yeah, well, it's it's great working with you too, Patrick, and and um, you are definitely a talent that a lot of productions need to look into. So I want to thank you, Richard Patrick, for joining me today here on Savannah on Film. So thank well, you. Yeah, thank you, Ed. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you, sir. Uh, Savannah on Film wants to feature professionals at different levels. So if you're listening and you're in the industry, I'd love to talk to you too. Our email is savannahonfilm at gmail.com. We are on Facebook. You can like the page if you choose there. And as Savannah on Film, we're also on Twitter and YouTube. You can subscribe on there if that's your choice. Uh, Savannah on Film is a voice for the Savannah film industry. And you have been listening to Savannah on Film with your host, Ed Susevich, on 107.5 FM, WRUU, 107.5 LP, Savannah Soundings, Community Radio with Global Soul. You have been listening to another episode of Savannah on Film, where we give a voice to the Savannah film community. Please like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. This program was originally broadcast on 107.5 FM in Savannah, Georgia, and worldwide on www.wruu.org. Join us next time for more intriguing insights into the vibrant Savannah film community here at Savannah on Film.